for electrician number one and three chapter two safety technical terms for this chapter are confined spaces current path fibrillation and lockout tagout procedures objectives for this chapter are site examples of hazardous situations identify hazards associated with electrical work explain basic safety rules describe safety equipment and protective clothing and to follow basic procedures designed to aid an injured worker The cause of accidents. Accidents are normally caused by a combination of events. First, there must be a potentially hazardous situation. Some examples of these situations include the following, performing work on energized equipment, performing work near an energized circuit, performing work on a ladder, scaffolding, or in an area where a fall hazard exists, performing work in a confined space, and performing work below other workers. The first step in preventing accidents is to identify the potential hazards before beginning work. Once these hazards are identified, you must take the appropriate steps to protect yourself from them. Working on energized, working on energized or live equipment is very dangerous. You must go to additional lengths to ensure your safety. These additional safety precautions are discussed later in the chapter. Disconnecting the circuit being worked on does not guarantee your safety. After disconnecting the circuit, always test the circuit using an appropriate testing instrument to make sure that there is no current. The most dangerous situation is working on energized equipment you think is de-energized. Also identify any nearby circuits that you may not have disconnected. When a fall hazard exists, wear appropriate safety harness. Always use non-conducting fiberglass ladders. An aluminum ladder can become energized if a live conductor comes in contact with it. Confined spaces, such as trenches, tunnels, and manholes, can provide many hazards. The tight working conditions may make it difficult for you to work carefully. An inadequate oxygen supply and the presence of explosive or poisonous gases are additional hazards. When work is performed in a confined space, a worker should be posted outside of the confined space to get help if an accident occurs. Work should never be performed below other workers without taking proper precautions. A physical barrier should be present to protect the lower workers from any falling debris created by the higher workers. This includes falling tools. Warning the most important rule for preventing electric accidents is to disconnect the circuits or the equipment being before doing work on it. The message is now on the screen. Electrical hazards, shocks and explosions caused by electrical faults are the two most dangerous electrical hazards. These hazards can only occur when working on or near energized equipment. Electrical shock can be painful and sometimes fatal. The severity of a shock depends on several conditions. First, moisture. If the floor equipment or clothing is wet, the shock will be more severe than when dry conditions. This includes wet skin. Second, flooring. The better the floor conducts uh, electricity, the more severe the shock potential. Third, grounding. Ungrounded equipment and circuits are much more dangerous than grounded ones. Fourth, duration of contact. An electrical shock may cause muscle paralysis, preventing a worker from releasing the equipment supplying the shock. And fifth, current path. As electric current passes through the body, internal tissue may be burnt. Current passing through the heart may cause an erratic heartbeat or and 
fibrillation, a potentially fatal condition where the heartbeat and pulse are not synchronized. Therefore, a current path through the heart, such as from hand to hand, is more dangerous than a current path that avoids the heart, such as the right hand to the right foot. For this, see figure 2-1 on the screen now. Voltage does not have as much to do with shock severity as current does. Remember, 10,000 volts is no more dangerous than 120 volts. A current of 10 milliamperes is painful and can have severe effects. A current of 100 milliamperes is almost always fatal. The table in figure 2-2 shown on the screen now shows the effects of various current levels. <clears throat> on high voltage equipment, a short circuit or fault may produce an electric arc and explosion. The arc is hazardous for three reasons. First, heat. A tremendous amount of heat can be generated by an electric arc. The heat may cause burns and hot metal components may be propelled onto the worker. Second, noise. The sudden expansion of air may cause an explosion which could result in hearing damage. Third, explosive force. The explosion may throw the worker back from the equipment. This, this helps the worker escape the heat, but the worker may suffer physical injury if thrown onto other equipment. Accident prevention. The best way to prevent electrical accidents is to always de-energize the circuit beco before you work on it. <coughs> When you disconnect the circuit, tag or mark the circuit so that it is not mistakenly reconnected before you complete your work. Lockout tagout procedures involve placing a lock on the disconnect to prevent the circuit from being from being connected. Figure 2-3. When the work is completed, the lock is removed and the circuit is re-energized. Be aware of any specific lockout tagout procedures and follow them. <clears throat> Basic safety rules. Certain safety rules should be followed during the installation and maintenance of electrical equipment. Obeying the following rules will help you prevent accidents and injury. Disconnect the circuit from the source if possible. Work on live circuits only when absolutely necessary. Never assume the circuit is de-energized. Check it with it with a test light or meter before starting work. Keep the work area dry and clean of debris, cover wet floors and cover those wet floors with wooden planks. Make sure all equipment is properly grounded. Use tools safely as outlined in chapter 3 of this text. And lastly remain alert at all times. Always think about what you're going to do before you do it. Avoid quick movements. Work slowly and deliberately. Plan each step of the work. Remember safety in electrical work may save your life and the lives of those working with you. Never compromise safety in order to complete a job more quickly. Working on energized equipment. Normally, electricians de-energize equipment before performing work. However, there are some rare times or rare times when the equipment must be hot or live while you work on it. When this occurs, you must obey the following additional safety procedures. First, be sure to be insulated to be sure to use insulated tools. Second, wear rubber gloves and eye protection and face protection. Third, place a rubber blanket or other suitable insulated shield over exposed live parts adjacent to the work area. Warning: Only work on energized equipment when it is absolutely necessary. Safety equipment. Construction work of any type can be dangerous. Electrical workers must perform their tasks as safety as safely as possible. 
The following are some of the items included as basic safety equipment for an electrician. First, hard hat, a molded impact resistant helmet protects the worker, the worker from accidental blows to the head. The hard hat should have an inner webbing that fits snugly against the head, leaving an air cushion between the helmet and the head to prevent direct impact from falling objects. A proper hard hat will also prevent a worker from electric shock. Hard hats are required on all construction sites. Eye protection, that is the second item. Safety glasses, goggles, and face masks are several types of eye protection required depending on the tasks being performed. They protect your eyes from flying debris, dust, liquids, and sparks. Safety glasses are a minimum eye protection required on all construction sites. They are made of shatterproof plastic or glass and have side shields. Goggles fit snug to the skin and are used mostly where liquids or mists may be present or may present a potential danger. Figure 2-4 shows or illustrates safety glasses and goggles, which is the, uh, the, the figure prior to this one. The full face mask is required where sparks or splashing liquids could be present. Ear protection, earplugs or earmuffs are used where noises, particularly loud and high frequency noises are generated. In certain severe conditions, both plugs and earmuffs are needed. Working in areas where drilling, hammering or sawing are continuous throughout the day warrants the use of ear protection. A constant exposure to high decibel noise can cause uh, permanent damage to the middle and inner ear. Various types of hearing protection are shown in figure 2-5. Safety belt and harness. Most fatal construction accidents are caused by falls. A fall of 6 foot can be serious and even deadly. Fall protection is the form of, in the form of safety belts and body harnesses can prevent these types of accidents. As with other types of personal protection, safety belts are required on most construction sites, particularly when working at heights of over 6 feet and up. Rubber gloves. Always wear rubber gloves, rubber gloves when working on energized equipment. The insulating material provides extra protection against electrical shocks. Rubber gloves should be tested every six months. Figure 2-6. Six. Insulated hand tools. If a metal screwdriver or other tool contacts a live wire or energized piece of equipment while in contact with a grounding path, an electrical fault can occur. The occurrence of these types of accidents is greatly reduced when insulated hand tools are used. The insulated material around the tool serves as a barrier preventing the flow of electricity. See figure 2-7 for this. Non-conductive ladders, fiberglass ladders should be used for electrical work. Aluminum ladders should be avoided because they can become energized if they come in contact with an electric source. Perhaps the most important item needed by the electrician is the protective clothing. Protect yourself by minimizing the amount of exposed skin. Clothing that is resistant to flash flame helps to prevent burns if a fault causes an explosion. Wear rubber boots or shoes with rubber soles. Use rubber gloves whenever possible. Do not wear clothing with exposed zippers, buttons or other metal fasteners. Never wear metal objects such as rings, wrist watches or bracelets. When working around electrical equipment, these conducting items increase the risk of electrical shock. Warning always wear a hard hat and safety glasses around construction areas. Helping an injured worker. When an injury occurs to another worker, you must remain calm. Do not panic. Consider your own safety first. If the accident was caused by an unsafe condition, does the condition still pose a danger? 
If so, do not place yourself in danger trying to help the injured worker. Remember, you are helping you're not helping anyone by getting injured yourself. You're only making matters worse. If the injury may be serious, call for help as soon as possible. The survival of the injured worker may depend on how quickly trained medical personnel arrive or by how quickly the victim can be transported to a trauma center. Remain calm on the telephone, provide as much information as possible, and stay on the line until the dispatcher, dispatcher tells you to hang up. Someone should wait by the work site entrance to help the emergency medical personnel find the location. It is best for several workers to wait in case of multiple vehicles arrive. Remember the medical personnel are unfamiliar with the work sites, so be sure that the area is clear and safe. Lead them from their vehicles to the injured worker. Note. You, if you are not aiding the injured worker, stay out of the way of people who are helping. As a general rule, if the injured worker is in a life-threatening situation and you can do something to remove the worker from that situation, do it before you can help. You call for help. Some examples of this include the following. If a shock victim's muscles are paralyzed, and they are still in contact with the electric source, stop the flow of electricity through the victim and then call for help. If an accident victim is not breathing and you have cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR training, perform CPR immediately and then send someone else to call for help. Warning: When another worker is injured, think of your own safety first. Do not put yourself in danger trying to help. This only can make matters worse. First aid preparation. The best way to prevent accidents from happening is to identify unsafe conditions and correct them. You should also be prepared as, as prepared as possible when an accident does occur. By preparing for an accident before it occurs, you will be able to react more quickly and more usefully if an accident does occur. There are many ways to prepare for accidents. Try to do as many of the following as possible. Always know where the work site first aid kit is located. Always know where a phone is located on the work site. If there is no number for an ambulance or the fire department posted, a dial, ni dial 911 and ask the operator to connect you with the emergency medical personnel, see the note below. Take a first aid and CPR class organizations such as the YMCA, the American Red Cross, or your local park district may offer a one day first aid and CPR class. The first aid training will provide guidance in dealing with many different types of injuries. Investing one day of time and taking the course may save a life someday. Note, most areas have 911 emergency service. If an injured worker may be in a life-threatening situation, use the 911 service. However, for less serious injuries, dial zero and have the operator connect you with the ambulance company. Warning, when helping an injured worker, avoid direct contact with bodily fluids or body fluids. The work site first aid kit should contain rubber gloves and a face shield for performing mouth-to-mouth -mouth procedures. A first aid class will generally cover methods for treating various types of injuries. The following lists some injuries and the generally accepted methods of treating or treatment of treatment. Shock victim, immediately action. Immediate action must be taken to help a shock victim, but take every precaution to not to place yourself in jeopardy. If the individual is still in contact with the source of current, use an insulated non-conductive object to move either the victim or the source. If the disconnect means is available, 
open the circuit, then call medical personnel to the scene. Bleeding. If the victim is bleeding, first find the source of blood. You may need to cut clothing. In order to do this, apply pressure to the wound with clean with a clean rag or cloth to reduce bleeding. Use the materials in the first aid kit to apply pressure dressing to the wound. If an appendage is severed, place the severed part in a dry plastic bag and place it in a cooler. Many appendages can be reattached if the victim receives treatment quickly. Puncture wounds. When an object is logged, lodged in a victim or in the victim, do not remove it. The object may do additional damage if you remove it. Try to stop the bleeding and prevent the object from moving. If the victim is impaled or on an object that cannot be moved, wait for the medical personnel to arrive before cutting the lodged object or the lodged item. Burns. The severity of burns varies. Most burns should be cooled with water to lessen the injured worker's pain. Burns can be over overcooled, so do not use ice. If the skin is black and charred, the nerves are burnt and there will be little pain. So if it is not necessary to cool with water. Heat. When working on a hot and humid day, be sure to drink plenty of, plenty of water to prevent dehydration. Lack of water may produce heat cramps, heat exhaustion, or heat stroke. Move a worker suffering from any heat related condition out of the direct sunlight immediately. A worker with heat cramps or heat exhaustion should rest and drink water. Heat stroke causes a person to turn bright red and to lose consciousness. If this occurs, the person must be cooled as quickly as possible, normally using water. Notes. This brief aid information is not sufficient to prepare you to treat an injured worker. It is only presented to illustrate how treatment varies among injuries and to encourage you to enroll in a first aid class. Presented on the screen now are some of the questions or all of the questions for this chapter two, safety. Do read those if you haven't already and become familiar with their answers. If you have any questions, doubts about them, go back into the text or rewind this video and review that section. Chapter 3, Tools. The technical terms encountered in this chapter are cable bender, fish tape, hole saw, hot box, insulated pliers, maggers, one-shot bend method, and the progression bend method. Objectives are to recognize the basic re con construction tools used by electricians, identify the tools used specifically for electrical installation, List basic safety rules for using tools. Identify various types of bending tools and pulling equipment. And explain the functions of various electrical testing devices. This chapter describes basic and complex tools used by commercial electricians to perform various wiring installations. The principles of tool use and proper care are emphasized. The use of both hand and power tools is covered. An electrician must have the correct tools for the job. Tools must be kept in good working order and properly repaired as needed. If they are in poor conditions, tools are not conductive to good work and should be replaced. Tools used for commercial or industrial installations can be quite expensive and often complicated to operate. They require a combination of skill, training, and experience to be used correctly, efficiently, and safely. 
standard construction tools. Many tools are used in several areas of, cons of construction. For example, carpenters, electricians, and plumbers all use hammers, saws, and drills in the course of their work. Anyone working in the building trades should be familiar with these standard construction tools. The following sections describe some of these tools and their specific use for electrical work. Warning. Most injuries occurring when using hand tools can be prevented by obeying the following safety rules. Always wear eye protection when using a tool. Use the correct tools for the job and use tools properly. And keep tools in good working condition and replace worn and damaged tools. Striking tools. Always select a type and size of hammer appropriate for the task. For example, you should not use a sledgehammer to drive nails for small cable brackets, nor would you use a small tack hammer to drive grounding rods into the ground. If the hammer is too large and heavy, the, the struck materials may be damaged and the hammer if the hammer is too small, it may not produce enough force to drive the object. A small hammer may also require its user to try to overcompensate by swinging harder and with less control, resulting often in a miss and damage to material or worst, your hand. <clears throat> you can mangle your hand or fingers this way. Never strike tools and objects that are not intended to be struck. Do not use the butt of a screwdriver, for example, or a flashlight to pound a nail or other object. Strike only objects designed to be struck, such as nails, chisels, and punches. Be sure the hammer is appropriate for the nail size. Always wear safety glasses when working with a hammer. Materials can be chipped accidentally sending small objects into the air. You can even hit your face or, or eyes with the hammer while striking. It has happened. Safety rules for hammers are summarized in figure 3-1 shown on the screen. First, always choose the right size and weight hammer for the intended purpose. Second, never strike tools together unless they are designed for such use. Third, striking tools should strike a surface squarely never at, a, never at an angle and fourth always wear safety glasses when working with striking tools another thing to wear is safety gloves or uh, construction gloves very important especially if you have the experience of uh, striking your knuckles or fingers while hammering not fun the following are some of the hammers used for electrical installation the claw hammer used for driving and pulling nails the two most common types of claw hammers are the curved claw hammer used for general carpentry and the straight claw hammer or framing hammer which is favored by electricians the straight claw hammer is better suited for breaking out plaster or drywall during remodeling the club hammer, often used to demolish mans mansory and to drive steel chisels, as well as mansory nails. The electrician may find this type of hammer useful to drive ground rods and bust through mansory. Again, I cannot stress enough to wear construction gloves while hammering, especially during driving. Sledgehammer is used for heavy work, particularly for driving stakes and splitting stone. This tool is very useful when driving ground rods. Again, always wear your safety glasses and construction gloves while hammering. A warning here shown is to never use a hammer that has a loose or damaged head. Sawing tools. Sewing tools are needed to cut materials and remove obstructions. The requirements of the specific tasks determine, the, determine whether a hand saw or power saw is used. Be sure the selected saw is appropriate for the task. Keep your saws well maintained. Follow the tool care instructions in the owner's manual. 
always work with a sharp blade and at the very least a dull blade forces you to work more slowly a dull blade can also bind the material and make it cutting more dangerous force is required to propel the saw through the cut but be careful not to use too much force let the blade do the cutting and not rush it trying to rush through the cut by forcing the saw puts added pressure on the blade and could cause the blade to break always wear gloves and safety glasses when sawing this protects your hands and eyes <clears throat> from any loose particles figure 3-2 summarizes the safety rules for cutting tools many different types of saws are used by electricians these include both hand saws and power saws the following are some of the more commonly used saws and some of their some of their uses the hand saw used to trim studying or modify joists to accommodate panels boxes and fixtures a fine tooth hand saw can be used to cut pvc conduit see figure 3-3 Keyhole saw. The keyhole saw is a handy saw for making neat, accurate openings in drywall for receptacle boxes. The reciprocate, reciprocating saw. The reciprocating saw used for heavy duty sawing onto wooden and metal structural members. These are usually electric, either plug in or uh, handheld. Or battery driven. The band saw needed to cut through heavy gauge metal framing and structural steel. They are also used to cut conduit and metal supports. These are again usually electric. The hack saw. This saw can be used to cut conduit and metal obstructions. And as shown on the screen, the hole saw is a cylindrical saw mounted on a auger with a pilot drill the auger is then fitted onto the electric drill whether it's plug-in or battery the saw is used to cut holes in wood and other materials see figure on the screen the cutting tool safety first is to wear gloves and safety glasses as always when cutting when using cutting tools second use the correct size and type of cutting tool for its design purpose Third, never force the cutting tool past the reasonable pressure. And fourth, keep cutting sh edges sharp. Or keep your tool cutting edges sharp. The caution is that hole saws are operated at different, different speeds for different materials. Be sure to check the manufacturer's information for the correct speed speed otherwise you can burn through your uh, hole saws rather quickly fastening tools the most popular fastening tools are screwdrivers and wrenches screwdrivers are used to install and tighten screws and terminal blocks and devices such as receptacles fixtures boxes box covers and panels they should be insulated when used for electrical work. Screwdrivers are designed to install and remove screws. Do not use a screwdriver for chiseling or prying. Never strike a, a screwdriver with a hammer. Caution, the size of the screwdriver should be appropriate for the screw. Using the wrong size screwdriver can cause damage to the screw head and the screwdriver. Wrenches are another versatile tool used by electricians to fasten items. There are numerous types of styles available. Most wrenches are forged from carbon steel or chrome vanadium, giving them superior strength and light weight. They are available in both English and metric standard sizes and lengths. When working with fastening tools, be sure to avoid over tightening or over torquing. This can damage the threads 
or the part being tightened. Drilling tools, augers, gimlets, reamers, brace and bits, hand drills and power drills are all members of a family of tools used for drilling or enlarging holes. The electrician makes use of several of these when insta installing electrical systems, particularly the power drill. The drill bits specially designed for wood or masonry are found in many sizes and lengths in the electrician's toolbox. They are absolutely essential components. Miscellaneous construction tools. Electricians use many standard construction tools when installing or repairing an electrical, an electrical system. The following is a partial list of tools that will be needed by the electrician. Toolboxes and cabinets. These products are designed to hold tools, not to stand or work on them. Always push wheeled cabinets. Do not pull them. Utility lights. A utility light is needed when the work area does not have proper lighting. This is often the case with electrical work where the light lighting circuit may be de-energized or lighting fixtures may not be yet installed. Other types of portable lights are also useful. The headlamp is an example of a very handy and versatile uh, utility light. Tape measure and the folding rule these instruments are used to measure distances. A measuring tape is a wide blade that will not bend as easily as a thin blade tape. The stiffer tape makes measuring easier. Ladders. Use wood or fiberglass ladders only for electrical work. Do not use ladders made of conductive materials such as aluminum. Chalk line. This tool marks straight lines. It can be used as an aid when cutting, measuring, and aligning items. The level. A level is used when placing conduit and equipment. The plumb bob used to establish vertical lines. This tool is basically a string with a pointed weight. A gas generator. Generators are used to supply power for tools and equipment requiring an electrical source. Other sources are now being uh, are becoming available, such as battery packs. Extension cords. Extension cords are needed to supply power to areas without available receptacles. Consider both the current load and the cord length when selecting an extension cord. Space heaters. When working in cold climates, heaters are needed to create a safe, warm working environment. Portable fans. In hot climates, fans are used to help keep workers cool. Fans also circulate air and transport dust and small particles away from the work area. Electrical tools. In addition to standard construction tools, electricians use a variety of specialized tools. These tools are designed to be used when working with electrical conductors, cables, and conduit. Electronic equipment is used to test the condition of circuits and equipment. Electricians' hand tools. Normally, electricians use hand tools to cut, strip, and crimp cables and conductors. The size, of our, the size of the cable or conductor determines the type of tool needed. For small conductors, pliers, and combination tools are all parts, are all that is needed. For large conductors and cables, specialized tools are needed. Pliers. When working with pliers, electricians use a variety of pliers to shape, bend, cut, and strip wire. 
There are many or there are many types of pliers, each suited for a particular set of tasks. Those types used by electri electrical workers are discussed below and illustrated in figure 3-5. <clears throat> the lineman's or linesman's pliers which in the picture which in the picture are going to be your C again your linesman's pliers these pliers are also known as combination pliers or engineers pliers they have flat serrated jaws with side cutters located close to the pivot the flat nosed pliers or pliers as seen in J these pliers are also called square nose pliers or duck bill pliers they're used to bend and shape wires they range in size or length from four and a, four and a half inches to seven and a half inches some have side cutters near the pivot the long-nosed pliers, which are either E or J, or are more commonly called needle-nosed pliers. These are extremely handy for shaping, bending, and cutting small gauge wires used in instrument and panel wiring. They have a variety of shapes, curved nose, bent nose, and straight nose. They have side cutters located just ahead of the pivot. The diagonal cutting pliers, which are shown on B in the figure and G. They are referred to as side cutting pliers. These pliers are these pliers are primarily used by electricians to cut wires flush with the surface. They're occasionally, they are occasionally provided with a coil spring between the handles to automatically open. The handles are fairly curved and the overall length is rarely more than 8 inches. End cutting pliers, which are shown in figure D. These pliers are also used to cut wire close to the surface while keeping your hands, particularly knuckles, free from injury. Since the jaws are just ahead of the pivot, these pliers can exert great force and are capable of cutting moderate sized wire. They are generally they generally range from five to nine inches in overall length. The slip joint pliers, which are shown in figure F. The function of the slip joint pliers is the same as the lineman pliers. However, the slip joint pliers can open at two different jaw widths due to the pivot design. Slip joint pliers are mostly used in plumbing, jewelry applications, and general work. Many slip joint pliers have curve have jaws that are partially flat and partially curved, so they can grip either flat or round work pieces. The tongue and groove pliers shown in figure A. These pliers have unique slots in the pivot area so they can be adjusted to several different widths. Originally designed to for working on plumbing fittings they are also called pump pliers. The tool has long handles to provide excellent leverage. Although they are adjusted like slip joint pliers, the grooves secure the jaw very well so these pliers won't, won't slip 
when working with substantial force. They are often used by electricians and as substitutes for adjustable wrenches and fixed wrenches. Finally, the vice grip pliers shown in figure A. The vice grip jaws are adjusted by turning an adjuster knob and I take the figure reference back there is no uh, vice grip shown on this figure. Again the vice grip the vice grip jaws are adjusted by turning an adjuster knob when closed. The jaws exert a tremendous force on the workpiece and stay locked until the release level is actuated. This makes the tool similar to a vise. Vise grip pliers are often used to temporarily clamp items together. There are several different jaw styles and shapes, flat jaw, curved serrated jaw, curved smooth jaw and a C-clamp jaw. Use pliers for their intended purpose. Do not use pliers to strike other objects or tools. Using pliers to tighten nuts and bolts can damage the fastener. Use the wrench instead. The insulated pliers. Insulated pliers should be used for electrical work. Figure 3-6 on the screen. The insulation helps protect the electrician from shock and may prevent the pliers from, elect from accidentally connecting to energized objects. Do not extend handles for greater leverage. Doing so may cause the handles to break or bend because they are not designed to support the larger, sword, the, the larger force. It can also damage the insulated handles create cracks and cuts and eventually make the insulation come loose. In situations where the pliers are not providing enough clamping force, use a larger set of pliers. See figure, uh, figure 3-7 summarizes the safety rules for pliers. First is to never use pliers to strike other objects or tools. Generally, pliers should not be used to tighten nuts or bolts. Wrenchers, wrenches are far better for that purpose. Keep the pivot oiled. For electrical work, be sure the handles are insulated. Do not use pliers to cut hardened steel wire unless they are specifically made for that purpose. When cutting electrical wire, always cut at right angles. Never extend handles for greater leverage. Use longer handled pliers or cutters designed for greater leverage. Cutting tools. Cables are cut on the work site using a wide variety of tools. Thick cables and large conductors are cut with long handled heavy-duty cable cutters, ratchet cable cutters, or hydraulic cable cutters. For most small conductors, wire cutters or cutting pliers are used. Caution: Most cable cutters are designed to cut copper and aluminum. Do not use them to cut steel or other materials use unless they are appro approved for that use. Caution. Excuse me. Stripping and crimping tools. A wide variety of stripping and crimping tools are also available for conductor sizes up to and including 10 AWG. A small combination tool can be used for stripping, crimping, and cutting. For larger conductors and cables, more specialized strippers and crimpers are needed. For that, see figure 3-9.
Compression tools are used to attach lugs and connectors to the end of cables and conductors. Manual and hydraulic compression tools are available. See figure 3-10. Bending tools. Conduit is normally purchased in straight lengths. In order to route conductors around corners, the conduit must be bent. Several tools are used to bend conduit. The type of conduit bender used depends on the type and size of conduit being bent. Conduit hickeys and hand benders can be used to bend small sizes up to and including one inch of rigid steel and rigid aluminum conduit. These tools are used to bend offsets in one and a quarter inch rigid conduits. Manual benders can also be used to bend EMT in sizes up to and including one and a quarter. See figure 3-11. Power conduit benders are used to form bends in larger conduit sizes. These benders are powered hydraulically or electrically. Several conduits can be bent at the same time. Electricians use two methods of conduit bending. The method is selected based on the type of conduit being bent, the size of the conduit, the size of the bend, and the tools available. In the progression bend method, the final bend is the result of many smaller bends. The first conduit is marked, the first small bend is made, then the conduit is repositioned. Another small bend is made, and then the conduit is again repositioned. This continues until the desired bend is attained. The one-shot bend method bends the conductor in a single step. There is no need to adjust the conduit in the bender several times. Compared to the progression bend method, the one-shot bending is faster and easier. However, this method requires larger and more expensive bending equipment. Rigid polyvinyl chloride conduit or PVC is normally too brittle to bend using hand or hydraulic benders. However, if the conduit is heated, it becomes more ductile or able to bend. A PVC heater, bender or electric hot box is used to prepare the piece for bending. The hot box is connected to a 120 volt power source and preheated. Once the proper temperature in the box is reached, the PVC is inserted and rotated until it becomes pliable. The conduit is removed and then bent into the proper shape. PVC conduit can be overheated, therefore never heat conduit with a concentrated heat source, such as a flame or a torch. The heat source should be uniform and constant. Use the proper tools for cutting PVC conduit. For that, see figure 3-12. Large conductors and cables can be bent with a cable bender. The leverage provided by the long handles allow thick cables to be bent by hand. Conduit can go through many procedures from the time it arrives at the work site until it is installed. In addition to benders, the following tools may be needed. A pipe cutter. This tool can be used to cut conduit. A hacksaw or a power saw may also be used. A pipe reamer. Cutting conduit can produce sharp metal burrs that can damage conduit insulation. A pipe reamer is used to remove these burrs. All conduit should be reamed before it is installed. If a pipe reamer is not available, a file can be used to remove burrs and sharp edges from the conduit, especially on the inside of the cut conduit. The conduit threader. Threads must be cut into rigid conduit so couplings and fittings can be screwed on. Pulling tools. 
after the conduit and boxes are installed, conductors must be pulled through the system. If the conductors are relatively small, fish tape can be used. The fish tape is first pushed through the conduit between the boxes where the ends of the conductor will be located. See figure 3-13. The conductor is then wrapped securely to the fish tape and both are pulled back through the conduit and to the other box. Wire pulling lubricant is used to ease cable pulling. The conductors are coated with the lubricant and then pulled through the conduit. After pulling, the lubricant dries to a thin film or powder. A power vacuum blower fishing system can also be used to move fish tape through the conduit. A piston with, a, with the line attached to it placed in the conduit the vacuum blower is attached to the conduit and blows the piston to the next outlet box. As the piston is blown through the conduit, it drags the tape behind it. Cable puller systems are used to pull ca uh, large cables through conduit. Cable pullers can be manual or may include an electric motor. Electrical testing tools in order to determine what is wrong with an electrical system, testing equipment is needed. The better the testing equipment, the easier the job and more accurate readings. There are numerous, numerous tools available for testing electrical components and circuitry. From the simple test lights to the most sophisticated circuit analysis instruments, electricians have a wide variety of units to choose from for testing, analyzing, and troubleshooting electrical systems. Great care should be taken while using any test equipment to protect the equipment and the operator. Be sure to read all of the instructions provided with the equipment before attempting to use it. Keep the instruction booklets and refer to it when necessary to ensure the equipment is being used correctly and operating accurately. The following are some of the most common testing instruments the voltage and continuity testers. These small battery operated testers are used to determine circuit voltage and polarity. Most testers can be used over a wide voltage range. See figure 3-14. Receptacle circuit testers. These testers check for various problems in a circuit. The features vary among models, but many test for open ground, correct wiring, open hot or neutral and reverse polarity. See figure 3-15. Clamp, uh, clamp on meters. These meters clamp around a conductor and measure the current in the line. Be sure to clamp on be sure the clamp on meter, jaw, meter jaws are closed completely and are on the conductor one on one conductor at a time. See figure 16. Mag ohm meters are also called maggers. These instruments measure resistance. They're used to detect insulation deterioration and the presence of dirt and moisture. Frequency meters. These meters measure the frequency and of an alternating uh, current. A frequency meter can be used to verify that a generator is working properly. Finally, multimeters. Generally, multimeters are used to measure voltage, current, and resistance in a circuit. A multimeter is shown in figure 3-17. Inspect the installation on test leads before and after testing. Look carefully for any cuts, abrasions, or nicks. Do not use the tester if there are any damage. Use the test equipment if uh, use the test equipment only for its intended purpose. Do not exceed the limitations of the equipment. Keep testing equipment in good, clean condition. Make sure all components are in proper condition and are well maintained. Internal fuses, power supply, cords, and batteries should be in good condition. When using instruments with several scales, always begin testing with the highest scale to prevent overloading. Work your way down through the scale 
until the appropriate scale is reached. This protects the instrument from damage. When making resistance measurements, never work on an energized circuit. Miscellaneous electrical tools. Electricians use many tools besides those discussed in this chapter. The following are several additional tools an electrician must be comfortable using. First of which is a calculator. Electricians perform calculations to size conductors, conduits and overcurrent protection devices. Calculations are also needed to determine material lengths and to set up conduit bends. Calculations or calculators are designed specifically for electrical work are also available, such as one in figure 3-18. Soldering iron for joining wires where the soldering is necessary. The fuse puller. Fuse pullers used to remove fuses from panel boards. And wire gauge. This instrument is used to check wire sizes. The review questions are shown on the screen. Do read and become familiar with those as necessary.